a review of everything we've done the last two and a half weeks, just together, using a problem in the book and, and not just sit in, in silence, but like, we'll do a journal entry, you guys will do it, we'll go through it and just kind of, you know, and then do our multi-step income statement and then move that into FIFO, LIFO and weighted average and just do kind of a big review day. What I was planning on doing was kind of jumping into the next unit, but I just, how do you feel about that? Okay, <laughs> good. All right, cool. So um, just, you're gonna need journals, obviously. So, um, Hi, Jen. Um, so hey. what I just explained that we're going to do is we're going to um, spend the day just going through, We're go it's a review day, we're going to go through a bunch of journal entries from chapter five, we're going to do a multi-step income statement, and we're going to take another look at our FIFO LIFO weighted average and lower cost or marketing. I went and reviewed both the test and the special project that's due on whatever day that is, I think Saturday. Um, and it's just, I just, I mean, this is just what I want to do today. So please uh, set up a journal, a couple pages of journals, um, and then find page 205 in your book. And we are going to work. Um, what did I decide? Hold on here a second. Yeah, so get your journal set up and then we're going to work through some journal entries on page 205 and then we're going to do problem 5-3b. So that's that's going to take probably a good hour here. Okay. So let's pop over here. And Jen and Tyler, you can see the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so here we are, 205. I'm gonna get my journal set up. And does everybody have access to the book, Dylan? Do you have your, okay, cool. So let's start, um, we're gonna do a little, I'm not going to do all of these, but just enough that we kind of get our journal entries back in our head. And then we're going to go to 5-3B and we're going to do a multi, we're going to look at an adjusted trial balance and do our statement. Okay, so um, here we are. We're, um, the name of the company is Menards. Um, we use the perpetual inventory system and the gross method. And that's all, that's all you guys know how to do. Um, we're not, re we haven't been working with the periodic and we had, there we go. And we haven't been working with the net method. So, and I did go through and screen the tests and the special projects to make sure that uh, none of that was included. Okay, so um, here we go. July 3rd, we bought some merchandise from OLB Corp for $15,000. The terms were 110 net 30. Free on board destination. You should be able to say to yourself what that means. And the invoice was dated July 3rd. So let's make our journal entry. Everybody okay with that? What just happened to my balance sheet? Trevor, what's one thing that just happened to my balance sheet with internal entry? <clears throat> yep, which is a, so my say, say it in the full sentence, my liabilities went up, right? What else happened, Veronica? My assets went up. So did anything happen to my balance sheet from a, from a net worth standpoint? Not at all. Okay, 
So that's great. This has come into my warehouse. <laughs> then I turned around on the 7th and I sold merchandise to Brill Company for 11,500. And my credit terms were 210 net 60, free on board destination. And the invoice was dated July 7th. The merchandise that I sold them had cost $7,750. How many journal entries do you need? Two. Yep. Make that happen. Now, since this is review, I'm sort of flying through it in the way where I'm not walking through everything. I'm going to ask a question after we do each journal entry, but I'm assuming on the whole that you're tracking. But you're going to raise your hand and say, what the heck's going on if you're not? Okay, next thing, after this transaction, tell me the gross profit they made on the sale to Brillo, both in dollars and in percentage. I want to know the gross profit um, in dollars from the sale. And I want to know the gross profit percentage on the sale. Um, nope, there's a model for gross profit. Can anybody help Andrew out? It's what minus what equals gross profit. Sales minus cost of goods sold. And then the percentage is what divided by what? Anybody? It's the gross profit. Go ahead. It's the, so the next, the question was, we all know how to get the gross profit dollars. It's sales minus COGS. But then I wanna know gross profit percentage is the gross profit as a percent of net sales. So GP divided by sales, net sales. Does that make sense? So what percentage of my sales dollars returns my gross profit? And that's the number that has to cover the percentage. It has to cover all the rest of my expenses. And uh, my net income, hopefully. Let's see what we got there. Yeah. All good. Okay. So for every dollar of sales, I've got 32.6 cents 
to cover all the rest of my expenses and my net income. Does that make sense? Do you think that's a number that's watched pretty carefully? I don't know if you guys followed the stock market, but they just released every quarter, right? So September 30th, or no, I'm sorry, every, well, every quarter and every month, but October's earnings were just released on, on Wall Street in the last week. And like Target and Walmart and all the Walgreens, their sales were up, yay, but their gross profit was down, their percentages. Can anybody speculate why, knowing what's going on in the world right now? Why? Yeah, all the stuff that they sell, all the little plastic tchotchkes that they sell cost more. Their sales were up, yay, but their gross profits were down, boo. And that's actually much more impactful in the whole scope because it just is. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. On the 10th, we purchased merchandise from Rupert Corp for 14.2. Here's our credit terms. This time it's FOB shipping point. Um, so let's book our purchase from Rupert. Okay. Easy peasy. And I'd like you after this one, your exercises below here, we've had three transactions, right? With OLB, with Brill, and with Rupert. Please look back at the three of these and just jot down what, if any, companies you think you're going, you think we're going to be paying freight on. Which of these three transactions do you expect to be seeing freight bills coming in from? Just write the names of the companies down. Which companies, just write the names of the companies down, you expect to be looking for freight bills from. Okay, so you gotta figure out, did I buy or sell? And is it free on board shipping or destination? There may be no companies or there may be three companies or anywhere in between. Jen, how many how many freight bills do you think you're looking for? Zero, one, two, or three. So that one, I can't see that. Um, uh, Paige, very good. Hold on. Can you see? Can you guys see the screen that I've got up on Flex? Oh, I can see it. It's just really small. Um, oh, okay. All right, that's fine. I'll just ask somebody in here. Oh no, it's okay. It's got uh, sold merchandise. Yeah, we're just saying. So we're gonna have one purchased and board We have one. I think we have two. Now let's walk through them. Oh, free on board destiny. Oh, the first two. On the first one, I bought merchandise. So I'm the destination, right? And it's free on board destination. So oh, I don't have a freight bill coming from this one. No, free, free on board. In other words, it's free to the destination. I'm the destination. I don't have a freight bill. Then here I sold merchandise to these guys. And it's so I'm the seller and it's free to them. 
So I've got I've got a bill coming, don't I? Yes. Then I bought some merchandise. Okay, so now I'm the destination, right? And it was free on board shipping point. So I'm paying this freight bill too, right? So I think that I'm looking for two freight bills. Now pencil in underneath those where those two freight bills are gonna go, what accounts? And it's not the same one. When I get the freight bills, pencil in now underneath these, what account you think I'm going to put the freight bill into? Uh, it may, may or may not be the same account. I have to think about this too. I, just, I can't just do this off the top of my head. Okay, so it's not the same account. Um, Hayden, where do you think the Brill freight bill is going? Freight out because I sold it. So that's out, right? Where does this account show up? It's just a regular old operating expense, isn't it? Okay, good. Um, Dylan, where do you think the freight bill from Rupert's going to go? Yes, sir. And so uh, eventually that's going to show up where? Yep. Will it sit there forever? Okay, so but then does my inventory sit there forever? No, where is that eventually going to end in when I sell it? Thank you. You guys track that through? A freight bill goes right in with the cost of the inventory. I think we also talked about stuff like import tariffs and you know insurance while you're shipping it. That all goes into inventory and sits on your balance sheet until you sell it and it flows to your PL. Go ahead. Um, so on one of the questions, or I don't know if it's when you have Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And you spread it over however many units are sitting in there. Good question. Okay, let's do a couple more here. Any Tyler, Jen, any issues? No, I've got that. Okay. Okay. We bought it from him. Yep. And if you're selling inventory and paying shipping, it always goes to freight out. The question is, am I paying in the am I paying shipping or not? Yeah. Shipping expense is called you can call it shipping expense. I don't care. I think in this book, don't they call it freight out? I mean, honestly, that's sort of an old fashioned term. You probably would see it in shipping expense anymore. Um, okay, we did that. All right, now here we are on the 12th. Brill, who, um, did I buy or sell stuff from them? I sold stuff to them. Brill actually physically returned some merchandise from the July 7th sale that had cost my company 1450 and been sold for two grand. And the merchandise was restored to inventory. How many journal entries? How many? Two. Two. Yeah, make them. July 12th.
make you think about this. Okay, so the inventory comes back, so I've got to put it back in my warehouse, right? And it's no longer in cost of goods sold. I got to get it off my P&L because it's back in my balance sheet now. And uh, <laughs> sales RNA Please. On the special set, they had there's like a couple of questions. That's out right there. Now, now the two questions I want you to, did everybody get those? Now I have two questions about what we just did. The first question is, what type of account is sales RNA? And the second question is, uh, what is the net sales model? And I want you to write that down for me, please. What type of account is sales RNA? I want you to write out what that is. And then I want you to physically write the model for net, net sales. And it's something minus something minus something equals something. Um, Dylan, what kind of account is sales RNA? Excellent. It's a contra revenue account. So in this example, did we use sales RNA for a return or for an allowance? Right, now, what if we had just given them an allowance? What would be different? Uh, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have to pay them no, I actually have to think about this. I totally agree with you. We, it, my question was if this was, so in this example, we had a return, right? And my question was, what if we just had an allowance? An allowance means that it's like, okay, this stuff's, is it working for me? And I'm like, it's not, we're shipping it back. I'll just give you an allowance. I obviously would still have this journal entry. You just, you wouldn't have this at all, would you? Because you don't have the inventory back. You don't have the inventory back and it still has to be in your cogs. Yeah, okay, so let's make that clear. Sorry, I kind of stumbled on that one. So if, if you have a sales returns and allowance is one account. If you have a physical return, you have two journal entries. If you don't have a physical return, in other words, you're like, okay, you sent me pictures. Yeah, this stuff is trashed. I don't want it back. You don't want it. You just have one journal entry. 
because nothing comes back into my into my inventory into my warehouse. Okay, you feel okay about that? All right. And then, so what's the model, um, Veronica? Yeah. You got it. Sales, less sales RNA, less sales discount equals what? Net sales. Okay, so far you guys are doing great. Everybody okay? All right, now let's see. Let's go. Uh, let's go down to five dash three B. Oh, let's do one with a discount. Uh, let's see. Do we have any payments here? Okay, let's jump to the twentieth. Let's jump for the to the twentieth. Okay, no. Let's do the fourteenth. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around here. Let's do the 14th. So here we are on the 14th after negotiations with Rupert. So who's Rupert? They're the guys that I bought the merchandise from on the 10th. Um, concerning problems with it, I received a price reduction from Rupert at 1200 bucks. So I called them, it's not stuff I sold now, it's stuff I bought and I called them and I'm like, this is not what I ordered. This is not what I ordered. It's just a price reduction. I'm not, I'm just getting a price reduction. What's my debit to? I don't owe him that money anymore, do I? What do you think the credit's for? I didn't send it back, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna do anything with it, am I? I mean, I'm not gonna sell it if there's problems with it. All right, now I'm on, let's go to the 17th. I'm kind of jumping around here. I received the balance due from Brill Company. And of course, with all these, you got to go back, or at least I do, every single time it'd be like, okay, that's something I sold. Um, so I made a sale on the 7th. They returned some stuff on the 12th, and I got to check the credit terms. So I'll give you a minute to do all that. I made a sale, I got a return, and then I gotta be mindful of whether or not it's within the um, terms for the discount that I offered. Might not be, I don't know.
Did you guys take the discount? I did. I think I got it within 10 days. And always be mindful, pull your accounts receivable off first so that you really have it in your head that you've got to get whatever's in AR off the books, the full amount. Then you can go deal with your cash and your sales discount. Trevor, what did you credit AR for? I I think I had a return for 2000 though, didn't I? So how much is, that's the, so that's step number one. You've got to figure out what's sitting in AR first. Yeah. Here's some of my cat scratchings. Turn that into your journal entry. Now, step number one, you gotta figure out what's in your AR because otherwise, how do you know what to pull off? Second step, I mean, I, you can really do it in any order, but I really think you should pull off the AR first. The second step I think is to figure out your discount. And they made it, maybe they didn't, you know, do it within the, within the period, but if they did, you got to book that. And then that lets you figure out what your debit to cash is, right? And I went up here and I looked at the credit terms, 210 net 60. It was within the 10 days. So I do get the 2% discount. Does anybody have issues with any of that? Yeah. So just to be clear, you've got to get the entire AR off. Now, let's just stop right here and do a little mini. So we've made, um, you know, we've made these journal entries. And we've made these. I want you to do a little mini sales model based on the journal entries you've just made. Okay, so set up your model again. I want you to rewrite it. This is just repetition, makes you get something in your head. So rewrite your net sales model for me, please. And this time put in the numbers from the journal entries we've made so far. Okay, so just scoot down on your paper, rewrite the model. And if you stopped everything right now, what would your net sales model look like? Okay. Sure. But I want you very quickly, my friend, to be able to pull this out of your head.
and do the little mini model in here and then pull your net sales number all the way up to the right, please, as I indicated. So do your little math in here and then pull your big number all the way out to the right, like we're actually doing an income statement. At this point, you're just looking right in your um, in your chart, not your chart, I'm sorry, in your general ledger or your general journal. In our case, that we haven't posted yet, and you're just picking up anything that you think is in the account called savings. Where do these journal entries go when we're done here? They go right into your ledger. Yeah, ledger, and then your PL is that. So, how many times have you credited sales so far today? That's your number. Because that's what would be in the account if that's all that's happened this month in that company. We didn't use the sales account, we used. There's three accounts here. Each one's a separate account in there, right? Part of the account. We use sales one. We use sales RNA one. And we use sales discount one. Right? And then take it down to gross profit. Once you get to net sales, you got to subtract cost and get to gross profit. So finish your model off. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Sure. Yep. Then what else? Well, on that journal entry, it was debit sales RNA credit AR. My next set of instructions is take this down to gross profit. What do you have to subtract from net sales? Cogs, of course. Very good. Finish off the model. Oh, no, 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 that's not right. There's a lot to think about here. So what is that, 3,010? Does everybody see where this 6,300 came from? Tyler, are you okay with that? 
I'm waiting for the little thumbs up. Okay. Okay, last thing, of course, what's the gross profit ratio? I can actually just put that there because I, I want to do something below this. Just pencil in the percentage for me there, please. The gross profit ratio. Um, It's as the gross profit as a percentage of what number? Net sales. If you don't have any of this stuff, it's just sales. But if you've got this stuff, you've got to divide it by net sales. Net sales, always divided by net sales. Okay, next question, foraging ahead. What's the very next thing I'm gonna write on my P&L? My next section heading is gonna say what? Yep. Okay, and let's just leave that for a while. And then what's it gonna say all the way at the bottom? Week one, what's at the very bottom of my PL? Now, okay, so now the question is, what kind of company am I? You can have lots of little subheadings in here to categorize your expenses as is appropriate for your company. This is a multi-step. Mm -hmm. This is a multi-step. What's an example of one of the small categories I might have under operating expenses? Right. I'm sorry. Right. Um, okay, now I'm talking about categorizing and let me give you an example. One of the categories may be general and administrative. What kinds of things would you think, would you imagine you might see under there? Yeah. What kinds of salaries? Your salespeople salaries? Um, no. So let me show you just some of the different kinds of categories you might have. GNA, marketing, sales, research and development. You might have 15 subcategories if you have a complex industry, or you might have two. And how would you know that, you guys? Like your day one at a new company, what would tell you all that? Just what? part of this whole accounting process would you look at? Uh, close, your chart of accounts. Your chart of accounts. And it would break them up. All the GNAs are, you know, start with a thousand and all the sales start with 2000 and all the research and development accounts start with 3000. You're not gonna sit there and make this up. It's gonna be done for you by the chief financial officer who hands you a chart of accounts and says, use it, okay? That's that. All right. So when you go to a company that's just started, you will most likely use either QuickBooks, if you're a small local company, or industry specific software. Like if you go to a construction company, they're not getting, well, they may use QuickBooks, but they're probably going to use a piece of software designed for construction. And then you're going to be like, oh, I'm brand new. I'm starting Lisa Swallow you know, development core, and they're gonna come up and go, what kind of business are you? And I'm gonna go, I'm a development company and they're gonna give me a, a chart of accounts that's designed for my kind of business. And then I'll tweak it. I'll be like, no, I don't need X or Y, but I do need, you know, Z. So I'll just tweak it and then I'll go on down the road. And nobody sits there anymore and goes, hmm, 
what accounts my granny? <laughs> okay, let's, um, what time do we have here? Okay, 11.50. I feel like this is definitely worth our uh, energy here. All right, let's take a look now, please, um, at, uh, we're going to jump over to six, and we're going to look at, Um, let's look at 6-16, uh, 245. Maybe we are, did we already do that one? Excuse you. Okay. Okay, let's go to 6-16 on page 245. And first off, let's talk about why we're even doing this. So I've got it, everybody found it? Where is that in? 245? Oh, sorry. Yeah, exercise C-16. Um, let's talk about why we're even doing this. So it looks like Martina's company um, is some sort of, you know, they're, you know, they're a baseball, uh, baseball goods company. They sell helmets, baths, shoes, and uniforms. And at the end of the month, they go in and they've, they've got 24, and let's just pretend there's a bunch of zeros there, 24,000 helmets, 17,000 baths, 38,000 shoes, 42,000 uniforms. Here's what they paid for each of the units. And here's the market value. First off, what does that mean? Let's mark it. No. Okay, closer. <laughs> nope, it's not what they can sell it for. This is what's confusing because most of the time when I ask you what market is, Trevor and I were just having this conversation. He says this like little piece of crap house next door to me just sold for seven hundred fifty thousand, and it's only worth three fifty. And I said, no, it's not. The market's actually seven fifty, or it wouldn't have sold for that. In other words, market usually means whatever you can get somebody to pay for something. That's what this is. This is tricky. In the case of lower, well, first off, let's just back up a step. What are we doing here? What does Gap tell us we have to do with our inventory that you guys have never heard of till this chapter? You have to carry your inventory at lower of cost or market. Have you ever heard that before in GAP? If your buildings go down in value, do you write them down? No. If other assets go down in value, do you write them down? No. Inventory is such a huge piece of our financial statements as we saw, because it impacts everything, that GAP says, and make write this down because I've said this about five times. It is current replacement value. Market for LCM is current replacement value. So I'm this big uniform, baseball uniform company headquartered in, you know, Lambert, Oklahoma. I sell all over the Midwest. And right now I go, I'm at the end of my year and I'm getting ready to do financial statements. And I go and I look at like what it would cost me to bring in that same inventory into my warehouse. It has nothing to do with what I can sell them for. And it's like, wow, these helmets would cost me 54 bucks a piece. But the baths would only cost me 72 bucks a piece. The shoes would have, you know, 91 a piece and uniforms 36 a piece. Gap says I have to do the math and figure out which is a smaller number, cost or market. And then I have to make sure that's what's on my balance sheet. Can you do that with this information here for me? Yes, you can. And you're going to set up two little columns that say total cost, 
Oh, no. Yeah. Total cost and total market. God bless. Now, the helmets in total cost me what? And the helmets current placement value today are what? So get, to get the total cost, I'm going to multiply what by what? Yeah, 24 by 50. No, 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 in total. So there was 24 units and they each cost me 50 bucks. So what's my total cost? and then figure out the total market. So I think they cost me 1200. And right now it would cost me 1296 to replace them. So your last column is LCM. Which of those two numbers is smaller? Write it down. And then finish out the other four items and tally the three columns. Yep, that's a smaller number, right? I'm sorry. I'm just reading the number number Then tally your three columns. Total them. That's just kind of a British term. What's the tally? And then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. And then we're going to make the journal entry. Oops. So here's my question.
What's inventory on the balance sheet at now? Okay, no, don't answer these out loud. We're gonna put them on a piece of paper and talk about them. <coughs> I want you to write, what's your inventory on your balance sheet at now? I want you to tell me, according to LCM, what should it be at, or what does it have to be at? And then I want you to make the journal entry. So what's your inventory on your balance sheet at right now? Don't say this out loud. I want you to each think through it on your own. According to lower cost or market, what should it be on your balance sheet at? And then make the journal entry to get it there. Okay. And your numbers. Here's the top two answers. It's on your books right now, which paid for it. And now I'm at the end of the period. I added up the lower of cost or market column. That's what it's got to be on my books at. First off, did I see you guys kind of some puzzled looks. Are these numbers right? Did you get these three sets? Of, you didn't get these three column totals? Uh, I didn't that. Okay, I'm sorry. So 12, 12, 24, 34, 58, and 15, 12. You got a different number? Okay. I got it. Two, two, four. Three, four, five, eight. One, five, one, two. I got 73.94 in that last column. So first off, do we all agree that this is what it's on the book at now? And do we all agree that the lower of cost or markets here? So it looks like we have a $254 AJE, right? What am I gonna debit and what am I gonna credit? Don't say it out loud, just think about it. You know that what's going to happen to your inventory number. Got to go. Okay. Ellen, you're frowning. Yeah. Where's your okay? So did you take 24 times 54? Yeah. Did you take 17 times 72? Oh, that's not Okay. And that's actually that's a, in this table, that's easy to do. After you do the cost, I would like cross that column out so you know that no, you should go back to this. Okay. So what's my debit to anybody? And what's my credit to? Okay. What just happened to my gross profit? due to lower of cost or market. Don't say it out loud, just write it down. What just happened with this journal entry to my gross, to my gross profit? 
Like, yeah, it went down. Sure, it did. My cogs just went up, which drove my gross profit down. Okay, last question. What would you have done if we'd gone through all the math over here? I'm not going to redo the numbers, but just for giggle's sake, let's say that this column, when I got done with it, said $7,900. What would you have done? Hmm. This doesn't have anything to do with sales, you guys. It's what you purchase your inventory for. What did I pay for it? Yes, why? Yes. But Andrew just said it's absolutely correct. And the example I just penciled in here, sorry, my title can't hear me. But the example I just penciled in here, I paid $76.48 for it. And if I went out in the marketplace and repurchased, it would cost me $7,900. It is already on my books at lower of cost or market. No adjusting entry. It's already at LCM. Until you pretty much every company in the country is going to be going through this on 1231 they still have to do the analysis that's required by gap but you're not going to have a write down on your inventory in a period of high inflation are you okay last 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 little snippet that we need to do here 1208 we've got uh what 12 minutes let's do a very simple example of set up your chart let's do a, which one do you want to do life of or Weighted average, probably that's the trickiest. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, really, the specific identification just tells you what. Sure, we can't. Like, okay, like we didn't, we worked on E6 3. That's a good one. So, uh, page 243, exercise 6 3. Okay, so we've worked on this before. Beginning inventory, sales, some purchases, some sales, some purchases. At the end of the uh, at the end of the period, first off, tell me just by looking at this, how many units do I have in ending inventory? Yeah. Now, specific identification tells you exactly what's in there. For specific identif identification, ending inventory consists of 180 units from the January 30th purchase, five units from the January 20th purchase, and 15 from the beginning inventory. Could you put together your ending inventory number pretty easily from that? Sure. Um, let's do a weighted average and we'll call it good. I think that one's the trickiest. Would you agree? Is that what you want to do? Uh, let's do. I guess my question is when we do a weighted average. No, can somebody help Andrew out with that? With weighted average, what's the kicker? Every time you make a purchase, you have to do what? Recalculate it. So then when you make a sale, you're not doing first in, first out where you go all the way up to the oldest purchase. You're just picking up that per unit cost from the last calculation. Do you guys feel like you need to work one, yay or nay? Okay. No, 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 there, there, no proverbial stupid question, although there really are, but that wasn't one of them. Um, <laughs> I hate when people go, there's no stupid questions, like, oh, yeah, there actually are. Um, do you want to do a short one? Okay, let's just do a super short one. 
let's do, let's set up our little columns. Okay, and we're just, I'm just gonna make this up. So um, what do we always start with? What do you gotta always think of A? Sorry? Yeah. Cost of this available. And then what do you need for a last little column with weighted average? Mm -hmm. We call weighted average unit cost. So set this little guy up and put in the data. I started this month out. I have 15 snow blowers that I bought for 200 bucks each sitting in my warehouse at Ace. So that's also obviously my inventory and my weighted average unit cost. And I'm stocking up, I'm getting ready for snow season. So what's today, the 18th? Fill in the chart. I just bought another 10 at 230 bucks. I just bought another 10 at 230 bucks. Fill in the chart. The thing is with this, you need to have two rows for everything. You can't just merge them. At uh, 230 each. You do have to wait, and you, yes, you do have to wait it. Yep. How are you going to do the weighted average cost? What divided by what? Yeah. How many? I've got 25 units. Okay. And obviously, this is assuming they're all the same, you know, same model, right? You're not getting them. The you're not merging the huge ones with the little you know, tiny ones. So your weighted average unit cost is now 212 bucks a pop. Now, book the journal entry on uh, 1119 to sell two of these snowblowers at 495. Book the journal entry the next day Guy comes in and he wants two of them, one for himself, one for his folks. Book it. And then we're gonna do ending inventory calculation and call it good. Guy comes in, sells two of them, pays cash, base hardware, you know, AR, no tax, easy peasy. He sold two snowblowers for $495 each.
calculate the gross profit ratio on this sale. Calculate the gross profit ratio on the sale of these two snowblowers for my little local Ace Hardware. Nine ninety minus four twenty four gives you gross profit divided by nine ninety fifty seven point two percent. Last thing, fill in the sale up here and tell me what's an ending inventory. I've got my COGS number, right? Now I need to know what's on my balance sheet via ending inventory after I sold those two units. What do I have available? 23, at how much each? Very good. 